Now there's many methods you can use to start and I'm not going to go through them all now. I'm just going to show you the one that I use the most which is the chain two or chain three method. And what that means is that you're going to be chaining two if you want to do single crochets in a circle and around. Or chain three if you want to do double crochets and around. So what I do, if I know I'm going to be having a lot of stitches worked in that first uh, chain, I'll pull up my loop just a little bit, just to give myself a little bit more space, and say I want to do double crochets. So I'm going to do that first chain, which is kind of on the big side, and then I'll chain two, which shall count as my first double crochet. So essentially I just chain three but I made my first chain a little bit bigger because that's what I'm going to be using. Now the reason why you use chain two for double crochet is because a double crochet is two, two step ups is what I call it. So single crochet is one step up and the double crochet is two steps up. So your chains are essentially giving you a step up. So another thing you want to do now that you have this bigger hole on the end is you want to make sure you work over your tail. So when you start to crochet, you want to make sure that you have that tail there. So when you yarn over, you'll double crochet over in your chain and over your tail. And I'm going to bring mine back this way because I am right handed. So I go this direction and I'm just going to start double crocheting inside my first chain that I did. And typically it's anywhere from 6 to 12 stitches in the first stitch, usually. So the chain 2 will count as a stitch. So you want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Now what I do when I count my stitches in the round is I start from the last stitch that I just did and count my stitches backwards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then this is my chain. This is 12 with my chain two. So that's also a way how you find your very first chain two because it will try to hide. Now go ahead and slip stitch in that beginning chain two and now you can pull your tail that you just crocheted over and tighten that hole and you can pull your stitch, hold your stitches while you pull. And I also bring my, my tail up to the next row just to kind of hide it as I go. So we're doing double crochets and like I told you before you need a two step up. So I'm going to chain two and in that same stitch in the top of the chain two you'll put another double crochet and that's an increase. You're going to be doing a lot of increases in the round because as you go farther and farther out if you don't add stitches, it's going to close up and that's how you make hats. You get it to the width you want and then just keep doing that same amount of stitches over and over and over again and it's just going to close, it'll make a tunnel. So if you want a flat piece that's a circle, then every round you're going to have to increase somewhere. And there's a basic way that people do that and that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. So after you've got your initial row here, you're going to be doubling those stitches. So if you have 12, then next this row you're going to double it to 24, which means every stitch of this row will, will need to have two double crochets in it. And again, I'm just going to hide my tail, so I'm going to crochet over it as I go along. That way I don't have to come back later on and hide my tails. I always recommend if someone's going to be wearing something of yours, that you should hide your tail with a tapestry needle because it just it better ensures that uh, it won't come loose later on. Not a hundred percent but it gives you more of a chance it won't happen. 
So I'm going to continue and put two double crochets in each stitch around. And it'll be pretty easy to see at the end of your row because you'll have that chain two right there. Okay, so when you get done with the end of your round, you want to count. You can count backwards. You increase in each stitch around. You had 12 here, so you should have 24 here. Count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. And to end the round to help not get this so much of a space there is that instead of increasing in the uh, uh, ending your row using the chain two, you want to go into the first double crochet. So go into that very first double crochet and slip stitch. And that is just, it's going to help you be able to hide that space a little bit more. Now we always want to, to begin with a single stitch because we want to end on an increase. That way it will also help us in, uh, close that hole there in between. So for the very first stitch of this row it will be a single. And then the very next stitch, you'll want to put a, an increase, so two double crochets. Then the very next stitch, put a single. Then the very next stitch, you'll do an increase. And you'll continue this pattern all the way around. And remember, you should end on an increase. And you should also have 36 stitches. Okay, I've come to the end of my round. And now you, I have to do an increase, and you're going to do an increase here, and this is your chain two from the last row. You're going to, and then there's a stitch here on top of it where we, you know, went over it to slip stitch inside the first double crochet instead of in it. So we can use this stitch now to finish our increase at the end of this row. So I'll put my last two in this stitch, and then you can count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. This is 35 and the chain 2 is 36. We're skipping over it, but it doesn't mean we aren't using it. And we'll be using it just like we just did. Now again, we're going to skip over this chain 2 and slip stitch right in the beginning, I mean right in the first double crochet. Then again, chain two. So we're now on one, two, three. You can easily see every round. This is one. That's two. This is three. Nice to work with double crochets for that reason. So now since we did one stitch in between our increases, this time we're going to be doing an increase and then we'll have two single stitches. So it'll be an increase and then it'll be a single stitch, a single stitch, and then an increase. So we never want to begin with an increase, so our chain two will count as our very first stitch, our first single stitch, and then in the same, uh, I should say, let's do the next, yeah, because we're going to be replacing. So the chain two is in our first double crochet. That will count as our first stitch of the round. So in the next double crochet, we're going to put our second single stitch of the round. Then our third double crochet over we're going to have our very first increase. So then now we need to do our two single stitches. So there's one, the next stitch, put two, and then we do our increase again, which is two double crochets in the same stitch. And we're going to keep repeating this for the row. We'll have an increase, a single stitch, a single stitch, an increase. So two double crochets, one double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochets. So your next two stitches will be a single double crochet here, a single double crochet here, and then an increase. Continue this all the way around and then I'll show you how to end your round. Again, when you come to the end of your row, using this little stitch here in between after, or I should say under your chain two, we'll put our increase in that stitch and then slip stitch in the first double crochet. And this is how you continue to increase over and over and over again. Next row you would put three single stitches in between your increases. And then the, the row after that you would put four single stitches 
in between your increases. The next would be five single stitches before your increases and so on and so forth. Uh, after a while the uh, the dynamic may change like just doing the stitches you know adding a stitch in between each uh, increase every row won't help and it it will start doing one of two things. Let me back up. If your project is starting to curl in like this, it means that there's not enough yarn. You're not increasing enough. And if your your material starts to like do this, then you have too much yarn in that spot. You know, if you can't lay the whole thing down and it's buckling up in one little area, you know you have too much, too much yarn in that area. So you need to rip it out and then try to design something that may be, you know, using less stitches that round. Um, it's pretty easy to, uh, to design something in the round if you use those two methods. Uh, you're going to have to do a lot of ripping out until you can find a, a pattern that works. But... Uh, that's, that's the thing about designing. Every ply yarn that you use and every size yarn will make a difference. And everybody crochets differently. Some people crochet much tighter. Some people crochet much looser. So that also plays a part. So keep all those things in mind and you should be able to create anything that you want in, uh, in, in the round. Uh, I don't know if I kept this in the, the video earlier, but I had mentioned like uh, when you're working in the round, if you want to make a hat, you can go around and, and around until you, you reach the width of the top of the head that you want, and then don't increase anymore. Just keep those number of stitches and just start putting like one double crochet in each stitch around. And if you do that, it's going to create a tunnel. It's going to create the, the tunnel of the hat. And then when it's long enough, then you can... Uh, you know, make a small little border and then be done. So I hope this helps you be able to start to design uh, your own uh, working in the round. Mm -hmm.